Hey everybody, what's up? Cyrus Exile back with finally a new freaking game, man. So this is Heads Will Roll, and I, I bought the package. You know, the big summer sale and everything. Hopefully, uh, I haven't played it yet. This is this. I started it, and then I was like, you know what? This game's gonna be a really good game to play. I don't feel like it's gonna be that long of a game. The music's incredibly loud. I, I'm sorry for that. Alright, well, let's start a new game. Yeah, we were in the process of... Cyrus, alright. Uh, I know, but but each death levels up your profile, so why not? So, ranks militia, man. I don't got anything. Uh, we're going to create them manually. I don't know what half this stuff does. Praying or mortifying flesh will have a 20% chance to recover twice as much fatigue, so there's a bunch of shit there. Permanent represents how virtuous you are in the eyes of people surrounding you, thus altering their perception of you as a person, enabling or disabling certain interactions. All right, so you can buy items and weapons, it looks like. This is about as far as I got. Is that a... I thought that was a crossbow reloader. All right, so... <clears throat> Ooh. I got enough of that anyway. So anyway, all right. Maybe Florians. So, Florians... Is that, is that a Florian? Is that a... <clears throat> is that French? Maybe. Uh, melee weapons. Represent your proficiency with melee weapons. Weapon skill influences damage. One for every six skill points. Well, chance to hit. Dance, dodge, chance, chance about that shields. Additional effects on strike. Same weapon talents. Unlock various bonuses for weapon types. God, it's still so loud, isn't it? Oh, it's so loud. Anyway. Uh, yeah, agility all the way. So it looks like 10... Number of available recipes, quality craft, chance to craft two items instead of one. Vitality, of course. Successful recovery, stamina, and... Double up on the agility, man, because we're going to need it. All right. A breakout of yet another war between England and France was barely a surprise to anyone. The rivalry between the two kingdoms had lasted more than a century, and small but regular armed conflicts have become a commonplace for them. This war seemed to many to be an ordinary event, but the English king had other plans. I mean, I don't know if this is the War of the Rose or the Hundred Year War or... This time, he had no interest in lesser goals and aimed as high as to ascend to the throne of France itself, using its ongoing dynasty crisis as a casa spella. War preparations started by Edward III had surpassed any of his past military campaigns. Understanding the scope of his ambition, the King of England did not delude himself. The war that he was about to embark on was going to be the greatest in history. And for an undertaking like that, a proper army was in order. The king began gathering forces long before declaring the war. Long negotiations and uncounted secret arguments bolstered the royal army with numerous allies as well as mercenaries from all over Europe. The core of his force, as it always has been, was constituted by the best of England's chivalry, eagerly awaiting their chance to finally outshine the French chevaliers and claim the laurels of the best in the world. For the Honorable Knights, this coming war was also an opportunity to amass wealth off of its spoils and bask in the glory of victorious battle. You two ended up among the ranks of the King's countless soldiers, but unlike the knights and mercenaries eagerly enlisted out of their own will, you, a peasant's son, did not have much of a choice. As beside professional warriors, the army also required those to do its dirty work, both in the meaning of digging ditches and being able to give up their lives for dirt cheap. By royal decree, a militia force was drafted from the free folk, Many wealthier people were be able to bribe their way out of service, but you, coming from a poor family, had no such opportunity. And thus, you received a royal gift for a, your 18th birthday, an unexpected journey to the shores of France. Weapon in hand, you suddenly find yourself treading an unfriendly soil. You wonder whether you will ever see your home again. Prologue. Journey begins. Castle Dunkirk, northern France. Welcome to Headsville Rural Reforge. Soon you will embark on your first adventure, but before you do, we have to warn you. Not all risks are worth taking, and not all fights are worth fighting. Blindly charging forward without considering the circumstances and consequences is the fastest way to get yourself killed. Headsville Rural will try to present the player with a lot of difficult choices, but your answers will never be right or wrong. There is always something to lose and something to gain, no matter the choice. 
A good strategy for success is to approach the adventures with an intent to simply survive rather than become a hero. Don't go on dangerous adventures, uh, Denver endeavors if you're not confident in your success, as you may be severely punished for unpreparedness. Some quests will fail, some characters you meet will grow to hate or despise you, and sometimes you will have to flee from a battle in order to save your life. Don't let those things bother you too much, as your real goal is to make it to the very end in one piece. And the last but not least, remember to keep track of time. Training, shopping, adventuring, and completing quests will consume it. Neglect one too much in favor of the other, and you're in for unpleasant surprises. So this is really a lot like um, a Legionary's life, and I, I guess I didn't realize that, but that game's really cool. And I, I should do a little like trifecta of those games, like this one, that one, because I just, you know, obviously you have to replay these games a million times. I mean, there's no way in a million years the first time I've ever played this game I'm getting through all in one shot. We're going to find out. You have received a salary in accordance with your rank, 55 florins. You receive a bonus pay in accordance with the prestige level of zero. Okay. Camp physician. Uh, trade. That's going to take up time. Man, this... this is there any way? Uh, very loud. All right. Always train. So training. Through training, you can improve the various skills and attributes of your character. Keep in mind that training both consumes time and rapidly builds up fatigue. If you do not want to start the battle in a disadvantageous position, then don't forget to properly rest. Ouch. I did not mean to do that. Your agility has increased, though. That's good. Increases with agility by one. Lightly exhausting. Additional skills, craftsman skin, solo practice. Increase your precision use crossbows by one. Skill limit 30. Very exhausting, moderately exhausting. Increase your skills by one, cost some florins. It's moderately exhausting. Weapon skill influences. Oh man, talents, huh? One talent point is given for every four consecutive weapon trainings. Five talents can be picked for each. Oh, I do like pool arms, as all people might know. I mean, I'm a sword guy through and through. Took sword classes in real life, actually. Uh, German longsword. A couple others, but not. I just dabbled in others. Um, sword and buckler, things like that. Um, Dusak. Uh, but anyway, I am a fan of pool arms, though. Alright, so right now this is going to okay, let's go back. See we're wasting time. Oh, but there are exhaustion levels going on. Fatigue builds up with every action a character takes. As it reaches higher levels, the character becomes increasingly less combat effective. So let's go back. Um, camp activities. In the camp, you can spend your time to relax, relieve your stress, and hang out with other soldiers while performing various activities. All of them help relieve stress in their own way and by different amounts, so it would be wise to try to hold all of them to see the results for yourself. In addition to that, the camp also serves as an important social hub where you can gather information and receive tasks from another character. I don't know what hanging around does, but uh, you spend some time hanging around, wandering around, yeah. You spend some time in solitude. That again, virtue went up a little bit. You guys want to gamble? I lost some money. I gained a little bit of money back. All right. No. Well, who are you and what do you need? I'm looking for a blacksmith. Well, you found him and he has his hands full. Now spit it out or get lost. Don't tr distract me from work. I need to repair my equipment. Nope. Think you have it all mixed up, boy. Do I look like a personal blacksmith? Damn knights have already buried us up to our throats and broken junk. We're all sweating our asses off. Here you come asking. I'm not asking you to help me for free. I'll be willing to pay for a job well done. Smart ass. For a job well done. I would gladly pay for my own... I would gladly pay from that. My own pocket. It's a shame there's no one around that can actually do that. Let's make a deal. You you do three shifts at the forge to help me out, and I'll take a look at your junk. I'll pay you for every shift, too. If your hands aren't actually growing out of your ass, you might even actually earn some decent coin. Your quest that is laborer. Working at the forge is a camp activity that acts as a temporary part-time job, and like other activities, this one increases your fatigue instead of lowering it. However, forge duty increases your craftsmanship and earns you some money with the amount depending on your craftsmanship. Working at the forge has been added to your camp activities. Alright, well. It's interesting. Uh, I got no reputation. Um, fresh. Alright, well, we're 
we're doing all right here. So, searching for available trade offers will consume some of your time to produce similar options. You can perform this action multiple times to find more items for sale. Healing herbs. That might be a thing. A gambeson. Do I have one? Uh, it's, it's cost too much florins anyway. Oh no, it doesn't. I have enough. Ooh, prisoner's chain. Bonus item. Low virtue. Heavy chain used to retain prisoners, preventing them escaping. Strength five, but every okay, no, don't do that. Uh, coral head, arrows, Fletcher's tool, sewing kit, self-made crossbows, craft items of leather and cloth. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna be doing a lot of that. Not a strong consuming alcohol is a good way to relieve stress and fatigue. It can be done both inside and outside of battle. The latter, however, might bring along some side effects. Can be drunk in camp for massive fatigue release. Instant recovers 30 fatigue in battle. Temporarily boosts vitality by 7. Jesus. 7. A thick padded jacket capable of providing protection barely considered something serious, but it does do a thing, so I don't know if that wasted time. I might pick a gambeson up. I don't know. I never saw... Was I even given one? Do I have... Any, I have nothing. Fucking hell. Okay, well, back to the fucking drawing board with me. Sorry. <laughs> Just like real swear and stuff. So, Sarge, your squad is led by an old sergeant, a battered soldier, his knight, who fought under the call Earl during the king's ill fated Scottish campaign. Despite his grumbling and his always dissatisfied look, the sergeant treats soldiers very well and tries to make sure everything's in order. But I'm doing his usual cleaning weapons, noticing you, he looks up inquiringly. What exactly do you want to know? Which weapon should I use? <laughs> what a stupid question. Actually, everything depends on your physical ability, skills, and fighting style. Okay, since you've never held anything sharper than a table and knife, let me explain to you what is in what is in a nutshell. No matter what you told you in childhood fairy tales about knights and their beautiful fat-ass maidens, in reality, the sword is far from the best choice on the bat. Damn straight, you use a fucking spear, that's why. It's a decent all-around weapon, but its versatility makes it mediocre at everything. The sword can do everything at once, but is inferior to other weapons in any area. If you're a smart fellow, not a fart smeller, then you choose an axe. This can chop the enemies into pieces just fine, so you make a stew. You can't really faint with it, and, well, it requires a lot of strength, especially if you're fighting for more than a couple minutes, but a good axe is pure power, especially in those cases when the enemy's clad in decent armor or covered behind a shield, like a timid lass hiding behind a dress. Good axemen can't be stopped by things like that. A couple of good swings can shatter any shield. Another solid option is some kind of club or mace, but then again, everything depends on your strength. If you're packing some serious muscle, then your strikes will drop in people like sacks of shit. <laughs> Mace-like weapons are also very good at draining away your enemy's stamina, by the way. You know what they say, one in the liver, then one to the dome. Bad guy's dead, we're going home. But all those supplies only if you can actually lift it, so if you're unfamiliar with the gym, then... that you call it James, then yeah, forget axes and maces. Go for something lighter. Oh, Jim, James, I get it. I, man, that one almost went over my head. Hands down, the best options are spears. Fucking right they are. They are perfect for keeping the enemy at the comfortable distance and easy to faint with, all the while slowly making Swiss cheese out of them with soft pokes. A poke here and a stab there, a couple of words about his mom and a brief mention of his sister. Hurt your enemy both physically and mentally, and victory's just around the corner. It is what it is, boy. Yeah, well. Let's take a look. Talk about war. There's something to tell, really. King set off in a grand campaign in the mainland. France is now its weakest ever. Golden opportunity. Uh, pays good, but I just doubt it. In and out, 20 minute adventure. Good money, warm bed, rich spoils. Last time I fell for these recruiters' sales pitch, I ended up in the mountains of Scotland with holes in my boots and a void in my stomach and air in my knee. Still don't understand how I managed not to die then. The Earl and I, Maracas, they got back alive. But we kicked the Highlanders' arses so badly they still can't sit. Bruh! <laughs> right. Clearly lucked out with the camp compared to what we had in Scotland. We we're all here living like kings. Camps around there is full of opportunity. Just keep your eyes peeled. I know the young recruits tend to get excited about Sally, but trust the old man, don't get hung up on it. You're probably thinking of returning home as a rich man and wowing the girls with luxurious gifts, but I'll tell you what. Boy, I'll tell you what. If you don't fill your pockets with useless gold, better to put money into business. Get yourself some decent equipment. Hell yeah, iron looks much more less pretty than gold, yeah, but it will save your life in the battle. Pockets full of florins will do a little use. Back home, it is the hefty wallet that makes a man rich, but here the rich is the one who's alive in one piece. You'll understand soon enough. Well, if you manage to find yourself at war with pants down, then you don't have any options. Take a look around the camp. Someone might have a spare gambeson, chainmail, shield lying around. Most soldiers would be happy to sell their wear, trade loot for a shiny coin, but find something useful among the junk is mostly a matter of luck, you know. 
Section officer courses elude it yourself. Scavenging corpses like vultures is the most honorable act, but sometimes survival demands it. Try to make sure that my people are decently equipped, then I don't have time to wipe each and every one of your snotty noses, even if I wanted to. If you prove yourself a decent lad, then I'll see what I can do for you. I don't have time to fuss with every soldier, boy. As I already said, if you want to be noticed, show yourself and prove that you're worthy of something. Until then, piss off. Quit wasting my time. What exactly do you want to know? Uh, how do I behave in battle, survive in battle? First thing you need to know is remember this is caution. Generally, you need to hurry only in two cases in life. When you want to get to the tavern before closing and when you're caught short. None of it, as you might guess, has anything to do with war. Make it a rule to carefully study your opponent before you act. Do not immediately rush at him. First assess the situation. Look what he has armed with and what he's wearing, how he behaves in battle. Try to find his vulnerabilities and only then take the risk. Defensive uh, action will be a good strategy against most opponents. If the enemy's aggressive, stay cool. Let him swing only once. Use feints. Knock him down with your shield. Kick his ass when you get the opportunity. Sooner or later, he'll get tired. And then when that happens, you crush him. Uh, but don't forget the war is not a nightly tournament. But a cruel meat grinder. There are no rules, no honor, and the main task here is just to survive. Do not be a coward, but don't ask for trouble. Soberly assess your strength and strength of the enemy, and I'm sure Lady Luck will smile upon you. Hey, anyway, well, that was fucking. That was what it was, so. Uh. I guess. Sparring? What's the difference? Skill limit. I see my reputation, not crunk. Your precision, yeah, well, that's good. Let's head to camp. That will work. No, I'm too exhausted to work at the forge, well. Spend time in solitude. Uh, self withdrawal from the life of the regiment causes you to lose comrades' respect. I see. I'm gonna lose money. And spend a bit of time in camp. You gradually get to know the various people, including making friends with several other young men drafted for the militia. All of you have quite a lot in common, including the fact that originating from poor families, you're forced to go to war without even remotely resembling decent weapons or having anything even remotely resembling decent weapons or armor. One of the guys going by the name of Bartholomew and having a rather shady past suggests you fix this situation presents you with a plan. His idea is to borrow the necessary equipment from someone who is not in such a desire need as you, the guard of the castle Dunkirk that is towering above your camp. According to him, the men guarding the castle are guards in name only. They have only been drafted from the surrounding countryside just as the war started and they can barely tell which side of the halberd goes towards the enemy. Security is as bad as it gets, so sneaking one of the armories is the far tower should be a piece of cake. Everything else we'll figure out on site. Before the claims it will take care of any locks we encounter, so we just have to grab and carry away as much armor as possible. Several soldiers are rather impressed and willing to try. They already plan to pull it off this night. Ah, sure. You see several other soldiers willing to take part. He insists you won't dilly-dally and go at midnight. You agree to meet the watchtower at midnight. Virtue went down. Soldiers. Oh, yeah, okay, well, you have just received your first quest. All active quest descriptions are listed. In, yeah, okay. Well, I, I like that, so we'll... How do I do this? Blacksmith agreed to help me the only to work three shifts at the forge. He agreed to depart from the camp and arrived at the farthest watchtower at midnight. Bartholomew and a couple of other soldiers are already waiting for you there. Bartholomew, clearly skilled in the local geography, confidently leads you along a hidden path through a ravine, dense thickets of bush. After three a quarter of an hour away, you finally find yourself tower through a secret entrance. Inside, once again, instructs you forbidding you to make any sounds. You move very silently. Trying to find the weapons room in the end of maze of passages, doors, and stairs that represent the interior tower, you find yourself on the creaking plank floor of one of the galleys. One by one, your comrades manage to carefully walk in without making any unnecessary sounds. It's unnecessary sounds. It's your turn now. Gently stepping on the boards with the grace of a domestic cat. You overcome any obstacle without any problems. Yeah, because I boosted my agility. Another quarter of an hour of strenuous wandering, games abide, see with sloppy, sleepy guards. You finally manage to reach chairs to armory. While you and two comrades watch the situation, Bartholomew's busy with the lock. Start to get worried, but a couple of minutes later, he draws your attention with a low whistle and smiling, finds you the gesture, open the door, finds you with a gesture, and opens the door. The choice of weapons and equipment that awaits you inside turns out to be not very impressive, but it still looks very solid. Well, I I see a pike. Am I 
having picked up everything that you liked, you basically embark on a return journey. Luck seems to be smiling, and the journey seems to go without incident. But suddenly, in the dark corridor, one of the doors opens before you know, and you find yourself face to face with the guard emerging from there. Handily making out your outlines in the dark, yes, in the front. Who is in the front of him? You don't really know what to do, and glance at Profile and his comrades, who have a l gone a little ahead. They are desperately signaling something to you with their hands, but you cannot distinguish the gestures in the dark. The situation just quickly becomes critical. Pushing the guard away from you, you run with all your might, hoping to escape before the time is overtaken you. Somewhere back behind your back, wild cries of the guard are heard, alerting everyone around you of your presence. As you whine and twist through the corridors, remembering your way back, the tower around you awakens. The silence and darkness that until recently filled its corridors and galleries are rapidly dissipating, give way to the bright light of torches, loud voices, and the clatter of feet and the clang of weapons. For a while, you manage to stay ahead of your pursuers, but in one of the corridors, literally a couple turns before the exit, you are overtaken. When he pounce on you, a chaos unfolds in which everyone turns out to be... For himself, luckily for you, Bartholomew manages to knock the torch out of the hands of one of the guards, diverting attention to himself and plunging the room into savage, saving darkness. Sensing danger, the guards stab their swords clearly, intending to take you dead, not alive. Most of them were occupied by your comrades, and only one of the pursuers focuses on you. It blocks the path to the exit. Thanks to the darkness and the surrounding confusion, you manage to dodge several of this awkward blow sword blows he's trying to reach you with, and taking advantage of his oversight, you run with all your might to the way out, leaving the fight behind. Agility pass checked. Nice. Or, er, agility check passed. Carrying off your feet at speed of a horse gallop, you manage to get out and make your way back to the camp in a roundabout way. Still not believing in your miraculous escape, you fall asleep. In the morning, far from the most pleasant news awaits you, the whole camp is buzzing with rumors that this might be a group of spies attack the... that may be a group of spies that attacked the castle. No one knows exactly what they were trying to pull off, however, thanks to the vigilance of the guards, their dirty plans were thwarted. Two bastards were hacked to death on the spot while four were for resisting arrest. Wait. Two bastards were hacked to death on the spot for resisting arrest, and another was captured alive. Now, according to rumors, he is sitting in one of the castle dungeons and soon will get executed. If lucky, everyone will be able to see it before dispatch. After such news, you can only shrug your shoulders. Yeah, I, I don't know how to feel about it, but I now have a light. Oh my god, I don't have enough. How much strength do you need to carry this thing? Four. Hmm. How much strength do you need for this? One. So I'm going to... Hell yeah. What's, so what does this do? Lightweight helmet that covers the top of the head offers relatively humble protection, so a little bonus. Um... Gives, gives me some kind of penalty. This doesn't give me any penalties. Uh, protections, a uh, lower jacket. Prevents injuries from attacks that are at least partially blocked by armor. Protects torso and limbs. Vitality bonus, four. Prestige, four. Endurance and coordination go down. That's fine. I don't even have the strength for that. So, nice. But, that was a nice little endeavor. Coordination's down big time, though. Yeah, stamina's up. Virtue's negative. People will definitely be hating me. Uh, okay. I ain't got time for that, boys. Yep. need four strength, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this is gonna suck. Oh, this is so bad. Wait, what? Tiny waste pouch that would hardly fit something larger than a handful of coins. Making them accessible during battle. Does it really make a difference? Okay, lowers duration of bleeding and light poisoning. Yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to buy that anyway. So, if 
Aren't you decreased by three, but your rep goes up the soldier. Seven mugs are strong out later. One of the drinking companions starts mocking. You make fun of your physique and lack of real combat experience. Wimp and sucker are among the mildest expletives in his speech, and he's obviously looking for a fight. He definitely deserves to be taught a lesson, but starting a fight him in a, in a military camp during an active campaign is not the brightest thing to do. Being a short fight way to get in trouble. Not wanting to start an unsafe fight, you decide to joke your way out of it. I just laugh it off. You realize that jokes aren't exactly your strong suit as you attempt to prick your offender with sharp wit misses its mark. Conflict's over, though. It was you. It wasn't you who got the upper hand. Yeah, well. I need to make this strength check. Yep. Okay, so... I've officially able to equip the short pike, which is fucking, thank God... Nice. Well, that's it. Time's out. Time to get it. After spending about a week at Castle Dunkirk, the army eventually begins its march to the southwest. The regiment's been assigned to the advance guard led by the king's son, Edward of Woodstock, the prince. With about half a day's march separating him from the main forces, Edward's main goal is to scout ahead and make sure that there are no major French reinforcements in sight. Riding at Cambra, you see a large French convoy with supplies that is entering through the main gates. The town obviously has not been prepared to handle a long siege yet and stands vulnerable. The young prince, eager to prove himself to his father, chooses a daring move to try and take the city by charging through the yet open gates. Time is of the essence, so Edward leads the attack immediately. Well. I got anybody in the windows, and I have the things equipped that I need. You don't get a secondary. Well, I have a gambeson. Oh, that's down here. I guess that's upper, lower, middle, something like that. I don't know. Sealed by the forest surrounding Cambra, the English managed to get close enough to catch the defenders by surprise. Prince spearheads the cavalry charge forward, crushing everything under them and breaking into the city. You and your fellow militiamen try to follow, follow in the tracks as fast as you can, but the difference in speed is just too great. By the time you have finally gotten to the gates, there is already a large group of enemy soldiers, guards, and militiamen gathering to block your way. Welcome to war. Very soon you'll have to shed your first blood, but before you do so... It would be wise to get acquainted with the main principles of a head rule rules combat system. Do you? Yeah, I do want a tutorial. This button is responsible for attacking with your main weapon. Upon clicking it, you will have to select a target to attack, particularly a particular move to use, and lastly, a part of enemy's body to target. Oh, I see. You will have to select a target to attack, a particular move to use, and lastly, a part of enemy's body. All right. Detailed info. Wait. Oh, okay, that's down here. Detailed information about various strikes and their properties can be viewed by hovering over their respective icons. Let's see. When selecting body parts to attack, hovering over the dice symbols will give you detailed information about the potential damage as well as any additional effects of your strike. Damage multiplier, damage, damage, chance to hit. Let's see. Another element that influences the hit probability is the current amount of stamina of the defending party. The higher it is, the higher the chance is to dodge an attack. This only applies to the defending party. The attacker's stamina amount does not influence the hit probability. Another element that influences the hit probability is the current amount of stamina of the defending party. The higher it is, the higher the chance to dodge an attack. This only applies to the defending party. The attacker's stamina amount does not influence its hit probability whatsoever. This allows you to execute a feint with your main weapon. Feint is a deceptive move that distracts your opponent. A successful feint will drain some of the target's stamina while applying an attack accuracy debuff that lasts for one turn. The success of the feint also depends on the character's perimeters. There are several types of feint, all of which operate in different ways and prioritize different stats. You can read more about them in the descriptions. This button is responsible for changing stances. Overall, there's three stances, offensive, defensive, and balanced. Offensive gives you additional hit chance and melee combat, but lowers your defense, both the dodge chance and shield block chance. The bonus that this stance provides increases with your weapon skill. Chance also makes you susceptible to enemy feints. D 
Defense works the opposite way, increases your defensive capabilities, you both dodge and block, but it lowers your hit. The evasion bonus said it provides skills with your agility, but the shield block chance always remains a flat value. Compared to offensive stance, this stance provides a slightly higher resistance to enemy feints. Bounce is a little middle ground, gives no bonuses either way. It's the best, but it is the best atta uh, the protection against enemy feints. It's the best. This stance offers the best protection, yeah, against enemy feints. This option allows you to recover stamina. The amount of stamina recovered depends on the character's coordination. Information about your enemies will be located in the upper right part of the screen. Click their icon to see their information. Sums it up. Don't forget your main task to survive. Good luck in battle. Alright, you sons of guns. This guy's fresh. Go to a defensive stat. Stance. It's got cost. Spear thrust, regular attack, faint strike, ignores enemy shield. He don't have one. If only be performed if the spear is held with two hands without a shield. Successful faint strike has a chance to apply a fainted debuff. Spear throw. Just go for a regular. Um, let's go for a regular in a body. 100% chance that he have. No, either he doesn't have armor. Nice hit. Big miss. Alright. Just do standard issue attack. Nice. Big hit. <clears throat> oh. That hurt. A little bit. That probably helped protect me a good bit, though. Uh, let's do another. Alright, we're doing alright ish. You're going to hit, but didn't do a lot. All offensive and defensive actions will increase your fatigue level by an amount equal to your stamina spent on that action. Right, five levels of fatigue. Fresh, winded, tired, on last legs, and exhausted. To progress from one level to the next, you will have to deplete one full stamina bar. The higher your stamina, maximum stamina, the slower your fatigue progresses. I see. First fatigue levels fresh do not apply any penalties, but the next levels apply increasingly severe ones. Then it. Fatigue penalties lower the accuracy of all your offensive actions as well as your chance to dodge enemy attacks. Please note that the physical exhaustion can easily undermine any advantages that a character might possess in equipment and skills. A man who can barely move his feet will, perform, will not perform well in combat against fresh opponents. This button is responsible for lowering your fatigue level in battle. The general principles of respite are similar to those of recover, and the amount of recovered fatigue also depends on your coordination. I'm winded. Yeah, I got a little bit of fatigue back. He's going to recover, too. Man, I want to get rid of this guy. He pretty hurt. Do a powerful throw. Wait, let's go back. How much is it cost? Oh, God. My stamina's fucking... It's beat. Let's go back. Let's do a respite. <clears throat> All right, uh, it's not working out well. I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing I'm not recovering shit. All right, I am recovering fatigue. I see. Fresh. So that's. He's winded. I'm back to fresh. So let's move to an offensive stance and just fucking put it to this guy. Are you serious? Not enough stamina. All right, let's go back to defensive and do a recover. Let's do another recover. That was good. Nice, big miss. All right, he's pretty tired. Do an offensive stance. Powerful thrust straight to the button. Wait. Doesn't chance. Oh, okay, it says right there. Neck. Head is 1.5. Yeah, let's go. Let's do a head of Ruski. Yeah, nice. Big hit. He hurt. Let's just go in. Let's go in with a standard issue. Oh, man. I, I don't have enough stamina. Son of a gun. Oh, I should have got out of... Ah, I should have got out of... Fuck. That is not good. I gotta finish this.
got to finish this. Uh, it'll bypass armor. He'll be dead. Ah, so close. I better not be another fight. Nice. Move on. No! I'm going to die from bleed. I'm going to die from bleed. I, do I have any items? Nothing. There's no bandages, no nothing. There's, there's, there's just dying of bleed. That's all there is. Oh, big miss. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm dead. Is there a run? There's no run. I should have bought a fucking heal. <laughs> I knew I should have bought a healing poultice or something. I had it, too, because I had all my items. I should go for broke, but I, I can't even do that. I'll check Phantom. I can't even do that. Just recover and die, I guess, man. Die from bleed. I'm done. You were killed in battle. So, that's... That's how that game works. Mm -hmm. Got a level. Got some more character generation points. And that little short little bit was Heads Will Rule Reforged. Uh, it's an interesting game, that's for sure. Uh, I guess we could give it one more go. Try it again. Uh, we'll keep it on that. So, I see now, I can't get any of that, there's no boost in health, um, any way to stop bleeding, that's what I need, Posi poison shield if you're not poisoned. How do you stop bleeding, man? There it is. Reduce bleeding effect by two turns. Any bleeding. Alright, so... And include... Alright. Hold control to skip text. All right, we'll just zoom through it. So here we are, back in the fray of things. Camp activities. Uh, we'll talk to the blacksmith. We've been through that. Um, okay. All right, now I, I can actually use a spear now, so we're, we're at least at that point. Appearance and demeanor immediately give away the fact she's a foreigner. She glances over your eyes dim and she loses interest in you completely. I'm looking for a doctor, Cecilia. Thing is, I am looking for a doctor. You found one. My name's Cecilia Grimaldi, and I am the doctor on the service of the King of England. As you seem to be from the militia, right? Um, yeah, okay. I introduce myself as a militiaman. I am one of the militiamen from the Earl Northampton squad. My name is. You can read it completely. Loss of interest in her is a slight disgust in her facial expression. The moment she hears the word militiaman, relationships Celia is lowered by one. It's clear that you should have started your introduction to this girl with some other interesting fact about yourself. Let's get straight to the point. What do you need? Ask about how she ended up. Forgive my curiosity, but did a girl like you, how did a girl like you end up in the war? I'm not sure. This is your business. Uh, what do you do? If I've ever needed the service of a doctor, then one of the doctors will definitely help you. But it's unlikely that it'll be me. I'm here to monitor the health of more and important people. Most minor inquiries will be healed, can be healed free of charge. But if more serious medical attention is needed, then I'm afraid there will be a price.
afraid there will be a prank guy. So, by the way, free advice, try to treat your wounds and injuries as soon as possible. You can get rid of the most ailments if you deal with them in a timely manner. However, if time is lost, the consequence of a particular wound can easily become chronic, and then there would be nothing to do about it. Alright, well, you know, that's super happy fun time. Um, yeah, time to do some drinking. Several months ale later, starts mocking you. Oh, here we go. This guy's starting shit with me. Wimp and sucker. Surefire way. Yeah, let's get into a fight. Fuck it. Let's teach this rascal a lesson. Since starting a fight with her here would be subject to harsh punishment, he devise a more appropriate course of action. Yeah, not wanting to risk serious punishment, nor willing to sink as low as the open with the sucker punch, you offer your opponent a fear, fist fight at a secluded spot near the town walls. Virtue increased by two. He really agrees, and you both head towards the wall. However, as soon as you're distracted from him, journey's vulgarly interrupted by a series of hard blows that come at you from behind. Any chance to defend yourself is lost in the first seconds of the fight. Before you know it, you're lying in the dirt, your head aches, and there's a distinct taste of blood in your mouth. Some deft hands search your pockets and withdraw a handful of fucking dicks. As you regain consciousness, you remember something your father once told you. Honors for knights, damsels, and solemn fools. Yeah, well. Apparently that didn't work out well for me. Let's head to the blacksmith. Wait, what? Yeah, and some florins. Let's do some gambling. Good lads. Pray a bunch of times. You spend some time in the camp, you gradually know various people. Alright, yeah, Bartholomew, we're not doing that because I'm not gonna. No thanks. Seems displeased, promise you remember the moment once your face ironclad French knights and armed teeth Flemish mercenaries. Before letting you go, he demands you keep your mouth shut or else he'll be back at even. Back at you even from the grave should you let out their plan. Virtue increased by five, soldiers gone down a bit. You have just received your first quest. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Alright, so... Let's go back. Camp activities. I got time to do one more thing. One more thing. How much money do I have? Because I'm going to need to buy a weapon. I got 32 coins. Well, somebody better give me something here. Decent fucking common army corp. Yeah, I better fucking buy it. I don't got nothing else. I got a throwing knife. Sure. Uh, this Gambison, I can't fucking purchase that. Improvised shield. Bonus item luck. Literally just a couple of wooden planks. Bonus item luck. And we'll take that. I got six. I guess I'm not going to be able to make anything in the way of sewing kit. Well, let's hope I don't bleed. Alright, well. Well, boys, let's be the last go here. You need a belt or sword pouch to equip. Oh, man, you gotta be kidding me. Wait, I didn't type crafting item. Oh, man. You need a belt or a pouch to equip. Son of a bitch. Well, I don't have the money for that. God, that would be fucking phenomenal. Ah, oh, it'd be so good. Fletcher's tools. Oh, I'm so dead. I just don't have the money, man. Uh, 
this is all bad. I'm gonna be punching people in combat. This has gotta be some terrible ass shit. Alright, a little tired. Left without a weapon, you can't think of anything better than arm yourself with a plain wooden club picked up from the ground, which immediately makes you the object of ridicule. Yep. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, that's horrible. I'm just spending about a week at the Castle Dunkirk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know, I know this. So. <laughs> yeah! Get it! If I could have got a fuck, I could have thro had a throwing knife, man. But you know, they ain't gonna let me have it. I am fucking doing bad, and I'm already fatigued. Proceed, sir. Killed, sealed by the forest. All right. Welcome to war. I don't need it because I'm gonna die anyway. Trains enemy stamina, builds up fatigue. Debuff is equal to a third of your strength, plus five. Okay, hold on. Let's just do a defensive stance. Shield. I can shield bash. Skip the turn, but receive increased chance to block any incoming turns. Cower. Cower behind shield. Hell yeah, I got planks, man. Look at me. Well, that fucking didn't do nothing for me. Yep, come on, block it. Nice, big miss. Okay, so he he's still fresh. Come on. <laughs> My stuff's going down. Timidy. Oh, son of a bitch. Alright, let's get in there. This isn't gonna matter. Yeah, it's a one in five chance. Go club his ass. Fuck. Big miss. Uh, to do. Ah, uh, son of a bitch. That's gonna go bad. Block with the shield. Nice. Big, big defense. Big defense. Nice. but he's also winded. I don't got any respites. I can't recover? I say, why can't I do that? Big miss. Big miss. He's going... Uh, limbs? I can't remember. But it multiplies his fatigue. Yeah, let's get in there. It's better than... Yeah, big, big hit. Big hit. That was a huge balance. Man, we that tired. Fatigue goes down a little bit. Oh, that fucking hurt. Wait, what? Oh my god, I'm poisoned and I'm bleeding. Well, that suck. All right. Dude, I'd be lucky if I can even get this guy. Time to go fucking heals. <clears throat> I'm a little disappointed it doesn't make a thumping sound, but I guess what are you gonna do? I'm I'm so hurting. Shield bash is at nice. Knocked him down, stunned. He's not able to move. He's on the ground. He's tired. Oh, I'm fucking exhausted, dude. Oh, I don't got nothing. He's going to recover, but fail a little bit. This is what you get when you're a peasant fighter, man.
thump this dude in the head. No, I can't believe it. 73%, dude. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. <clears throat> Defense. Recover. Blocked. Shield block. Nice. Recover. Come on. At least let me take one guy down. I don't think I'm ever gonna get to, though. I, I feel like this guy is not fucking ever gonna die. <clears throat> There's no possible way I'm taking this guy down. Round 20. I'm probably on his last lay. I'm dying. Dying. Enemy formation is crumbling. A battle may be soon coming to an end. Yeah. Well, you're never going to win, so I can tell you that. Yeah, a shield bash was worth it. It was worth a go. <laughs> Make an enemy reach maximum fatigue level. Yeah, they're beat. So am I, though. Big recover, though. <clears throat> I'm bleeding out. Come on, dude. There's got to be a move here. Go heals. Ah, I blocked the damn shield. Son of a bitch. Not able to sustain your attack. The enemies are slowly giving in soon. Begin a hasty retreat. I mean, what else is there really to... <clears throat> Due to the confusion, you managed to overcome the poorly organized defenders in a swift and rather hectic fight. <clears throat> Their tactical retreat into the walls quickly escalates to a chaotic route. You stormed into the proper town. You storm into the town proper, hot on their heels. Inside of the walls, however, the situation's already changing. Prince's knights are struggling to hold against the superior numbers of the French, and slowly but surely are falling back toward the main gate. The prince could definitely use some infantry support, but rushing to his aid may prove to be a dangerous undertaking. Not willing to leave Prince Edward in danger, the Earl quickly calls for volunteers to join the rescue effort. The rest are told to hold the city gate for a safe retreat thereafter. It seems only seasoned fierce warriors are joining the Earl. It's unlikely someone will point a finger at you if you refuse. Especially given that you're wounded and exhausted, barely able to even stand straight. This is clearly a good opportunity to prove yourself to the Earl, maybe even to the Prince himself, but right now, on the other side of the scale, lies no less than your own life, and the question is whether or not this is the time to risk it. Hell yeah, dude, we're going all in. Driven by courage and some impulsive honor, you join the Daredevils in an attempt to rescue the Prince and his retinue. Many of your fellow militiamen are openly surprised by your bold move. The Earl, his first time noticing you since the start of the campaign, also seems impressed. I got a little bit. Several other soldiers follow your example and join the group, obviously wanting to keep up. Drawing the sword, the Earl himself leads you into an attack through a narrow street towards the Prince and his men, who are partially, practically, surrounded in the town square nearby. You soon find your path blocked by well-armed soldiers from the town garrison, clearly trying to cut off the Prince's party from reinforcements. Yeah, this is all bad. Oh my god. There's no fucking way. I'm gonna have to shield bash this guy into oblivion, dude. <clears throat> Reach maximum fatigue level in a fight. Yeah, I'm fucking dying, dude. This thing's horrific. Um. That's the only thing I can do. There's no winning otherwise. die from this hit oh my god I can't believe I'm surviving this this is unbelievable just keep on fighting the good fight my friend just wear him down wear him down ah shield bash him into oblivion no oh, big block with the shield Shield bash. Ugh. Ah, I miss. He's gonna recover though. Alright. I'm gonna recover. He's probably gonna attack. I hope he's gonna recover again. This cost 10. I can't do it. 
Um, I have to recover again. Oh, I'm still alive, but my leg's broken. Receive an injury. Agility reduced by three. Well, I'm going to get hit with every single thing that ever of all time. Oh, this is this shield doesn't have much left in it. Ah, oh, big miss. I'm going down. Oh, man. Uh, don't hit me. Yeah, big block with a shield, dude. That thing is holding strong, boys. Holding strong. Put him down, put him down, put him down. Ah, fuck it. Damn it. I don't got nothing in me. But just pure death. And I'm done. Bleeding hit. Oh, uh, so. Heads will roll for Reforged. A classic game. And get any score. <laughs> that is hilarious. I did nothing. So, we'll pick this one up again. We'll give it a shot again. I, I actually really enjoyed it. Interesting game, that's for sure. Um, I guess, till next time. Peace.